or you can buy them for Urban Native Edibles. <laughs> G'day, my fellow YouTubers. It's your favourite lovable doll bludger, the Gunjaroo, <laughs> and his mate Liam Ward from Urban Native Edibles. And today, we're going to give you a tour of his farm. So, yeah. Liam. Yeah. Going on. Um, yeah, I just run a little mini um, sort of bush feeds nursery down here in Melbourne. Um, yeah, it's kind of small operation sort of thing, but um, yeah, running out a few greenhouses and um, I don't know, a bit of tree farm thing going on in the backyard, but eventually expanding up to, yeah, a couple of hectares and whatever, so. Show us around, show us what you yeah. got for sale. <laughs> yeah, mainly sort of subtropics to um, full tropics in some cases. Some of it's kind of uh, temperate rainforest and whatever. Um, yeah, it's also a bit of a production section for some of the smaller stuff and whatever else. <laughs> Down along this section here, we've got um, lemon myrtle, which is a yeah native sort of um, herb, I guess spice, whatever you want to use. Um, yeah, in the eucalypt family and stuff like that. Um, pretty uh, interesting. Um, really good for cooking though. Beautiful flavour. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all along here is um, orange berries. Uh, they're a native from up north. Uh, yeah, far north Queensland. Um, yeah, related to citrus, but they've got like a gelat yeah, kind of gelatinous pink fruit they get. Um, it's kind of sweet and tangy at the same time. Um, yeah, really nice. Um, this one here is a small leaf tamarind tree. Uh, I just picked that up recently for uh, germination sort of thing. Um, they're actually endangered in the wild. Uh, don't get a lot of them because of, yeah, land clearing and stuff these days. But, um, yeah, really nice fruit. They're not like... Uh, Eurasian tamarind, which is a lot more, um, yeah, I don't know what you'd say, kind of like big furry sort of like a pod growing sort of plant. Um, they have little clusters of berries. Um, yeah, moving along, got uh, some native peanut trees here. Uh, these ones are actually related to cocoa beans. It's when Australia and um, South America were attached by Gondwana and stuff. Um, yeah, and they actually have these big pods that look really similar to cacao pods. Um, but yeah, when they pop open, they've got these big nuts in them. They've got big black shells and whatever. Uh, these are Davidson's plums. They're a native, almost like dinosaur sort of species from up north. You get them in uh, northern New South Wales and Queensland, whatever else. These are the Queensland varieties, actually three species of them. Um, but yeah, they've got these big plum-like fruit, which are really tart and whatever. Um, yeah, really cool. And you get a lot of cassowaries and emus and shit eating them. Yep. Um, this one in the corner, this is a, a native uh, juniper berry. Uh, they grow on the sides of beaches and stuff. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Little purple berries on them. Um, over this side's a bit more of a production area. Propagation yeah, area. Yeah, yep. some, some stuff's growing, some stuff I've got to clear out and whatever else. Yep, you got a bit of a spider farm going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, love it. Yeah, so there's a bunch of some cuttings growing in there or whatever else. I love this. I use these egg cartons too for many uh, yeah. different things. They're really good for wood eating mushrooms. Yeah, love eating yeah. these things as well. So oh, I used to go through piles of them before I really started getting um propagation. Yeah, yeah enough sort of pots and trays and whatever else for stuff. So Yep. Um, oh, these are finger limes, so they're native citrus. No, oh, beautiful. Um, still pretty young. These are about a year old. These ones. Um, yeah. But they're a constant production um, line thing because I sell an absolute heap of them. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, they're always. Uh, I don't know. Just because of media and whatever else, they're always on TV and whatever. So people are always. Um, and now they're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, these are just more lemon myrtles, uh, younger ones, little cuttings grown and whatever, which are going to have for sale eventually. Um, down along here, I've got a bit of a mix of things. So, this is a medium berry, um, or another one in the myrtle family, but they grow in uh, there's a couple of different species of them, but um, these ones are from northern New South Wales, South Queensland, um, and they're really similar to like blueberries, they're really, really nice to eat, but um. They're kind of like slightly spicy aftertaste. This one's a native elderberry. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, they get big sort of sh small shrubby sort of thing, little yellow berries all over them. Yeah, nice. Uh, this one's a native river mint. So this one grows. Wow. Yeah, yeah this one grows around um, where we grew up in Albury. Wow. Um, 
down like yeah up through the Murray and Darling and stuff like that. I would like to get some of this for the farm, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, mint is a good deterrent for mice. They don't yeah, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one's uh, oh, got a couple of different names, but it gets called a native uh, pomegranate. Oh yeah. Um, and it grows a fruit, or also sometimes referred to as a wild orange, but it's actually in the caper family. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and it's covered in little spines and whatever. But yeah, you get these big sort of um, tangy fruit off them. Yellow, yellowy orange flesh and big seeds and stuff like that. But they're really nice to eat. Yep. Uh, these are more orange berries. These ones, these are nuts. These are actually in the myrtle family too, so they're related to eucalypts as well, but they grow in far north Queensland. Um, and they're called a uh, Cedar Bay uh, cherry. Yep. Or um, beach cherries. Um, yeah, and they get this big red fruit on them about this big kind of thing. Um, really nice to eat and really sweet and stuff. Good for jams and stuff too. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. This section. Greenhouse one. Yeah, yeah. Done. Let's keep know, moving. So this is probably more my oh, biggest stock tree farm area. <laughs> yep. Um, there's some personal plants and whatever else I've got growing. Um, we've got a couple of species of lily pilly. Yeah, I'll roll, we'll run you through anyway. Yeah, perfect. This one's a Kunzia uh, Muntry, so it's a native cranberry. Uh, it grows near, near um, in Victoria and South Australia. And you get it a lot out in the sort of sand flats in between those areas. You get these really nice big sort of purpley green berries on them and whatever else. Yeah. What what year does it, uh, what time of year is it fruit in the spring? Yeah, they're more of a spring summertime sort of thing. Yep. Um, yeah, these ones here, so I've got four different species of lily pilly. So this is a magenta lily pilly. They grow through uh, New South Wales, mainly around Sydney and north of there. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a creek lily pilly. This one has quite a big range, so it grows some Vic, even get a Tassie and stuff all the way up to Queensland. Yep. Much so widely dispersed. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a common lily pilly. Let me come around this side. Uh, this one grows in uh, Victoria and Tassie mainly. It's quite a temperate sort of zone yeah. species. Um, and then this one over here yeah. is a small leaf, uh, or also known as a rye berry. Um, and they grow in more tropical areas normally, uh, around sort of, or subtropics, you know, northern New South Wales, uh, Queensland, whatever. Yep. What's this big one? Uh, this one. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're all thinking. <laughs> uh, this one's actually a native rosella hibiscus. Um, so it gets very similar plants. You know, you've probably seen Chinese roses and stuff everywhere. Um, not to be mixed up with the one, there's another species, which is actually a West African import that's become naturalized. Um, yeah, these ones are actually endemic and native sort of thing. Have been, yep. They've been here. Yeah, naturally evolved here rather than the only couple of thousand years that the endemic ones, the uh, yeah, West African ones came over. We are all indigenous <laughs> to planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> uh, this one's, so this one's a, another one of those weird Gondwan species. It's a bit of a crossover with um, the Americas. It's known as a black apple, uh, one of the biggest bush fruits available to um, in the country as well. They're actually related to sapote. Uh, which grow in, you know, Central and Northern South America. Um, yeah, so they get these big purple fruit on giant seeds and they've got real solid flesh when you take them apart sort of thing. And this one looks particularly healthy. Yeah, yeah, I've got a heap of them out the back too, which will grow. Uh, this one's one I picked up recently for prop. Um, it's a gelatin wax flower, so it's another herb, native herb sort of thing, but it grows, yeah, gelatin West Australian species. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they just grow on the side of hills and sand dunes and whatever else, you know. Yep. Um, this one's, oh, it's a kefir lime. They're not, probably about the only non-native I'm growing. Um. A finger lime, you said? No, nah, this one here is a kefir lime. Kefir lime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're one of the Asian species. But this yeah. is, this one here. Wow, look at that thing. And this one here are both finger limes, which are natives. And they grow almost like rose bushes, hey? <laughs> That's another orange berry here. Looks uh, like something like out of a Mario level. Oh, no, right. 
like almost like a palm tree or something. Like you got to climb up the bean store. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty nuts. They take years to fruit too, up to a decade in some cases. Yeah. Um, this one's a native fig species, sandpaper figs. If you actually you can kind of hear the scratchiness of the leaves and whatever else. Um, yeah. I can feel that. That's wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, like, it feels like grip tape on a skateboard. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, yeah. Well, that's what they call them, sandpaper figs. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. they got these little purple figs on them. Um, really nice to eat. Yep. Um, yeah. What's, what's this big fella? This one's not so edible. You can, if you boil them down, this is another native fig species in Morton Bay. Everybody knows Morton Bay. So I know the bugs. Giant, giant monsters of uh, fig trees sort of thing. One of the biggest. Oh, in. yeah, yeah, yep. Well, it's ficus macrophilia, so macro is in huge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's another native tamarind species, but uh, it's a broadleaf tamarind. Um, yeah, they're another sort of northern species, but they're a bit more durable in the southern states, I find. They've got very furry leaves. Sort yeah, of much softer, eh? Um, they grow, yeah, much the same sort of fruit, but... Um, yeah, they're a lot more common than the small leaf, which are the endangered species. Yep. What have we got down here? Uh, a couple of bits and pieces. Sorry, they got the weeds in them. Uh, this is a... Uh, My uh, audience love weed. <laughs> so we're good, I reckon. Yeah, this is a um, Logifolia. Uh, Lamandra. So also known as uh, spiny mat rush or basket... Uh, yeah, basket grass and stuff like that. Yep. Um, this one, yeah, is a native, uh, what do you call it? Native grain. Oh, really? Yeah, so they'll actually get these big heads, they're like a lot of grasses and whatever, they'll get flower spikes yeah. and whatever, and their heads will be covered in these little, um, in, yeah, big spiny, um, huge big spines about that big on them. Yep. But then all these little berries, real tight knit berries that go like a yellowy orange colour. Yep. If you pick one off and shake them a bit, you'll actually hear the seeds sort of rattling around in there and you've got to like, yeah, dry them out and crush them out. Um, yep. Sounds like a lot of work. But yeah, it's a lot of work to say. And even harvesting is it's kind of annoying. But it's probably worth it and there's probably some med medicinal value to it, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, they're just, uh, you know, gluten sort of substitute and whatever yeah. else, but... Uh, but they're not sprayed with glyphosate. No. <laughs> no, and you'll find them just growing on the side of the road everywhere. Amazing. Yeah, so this is a salt wattle, uh, another West Australian species from uh, the northwest up in the tropical zone. Um, and they normally, they're really good for high saline soils. Mm -hmm. um, actually can be used to drop down the, the uh, salt plain. Yeah, okay. In soils. Uh, yeah, yeah, they actually use I them. need these at my mum and dad's. Property they live oh, in a really? sand flat. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. These are great for that. Um, yep. they use them. I've actually seen people in, uh, around Kuwait and Bahrain and stuff yeah, import wow. these. Yeah, That makes sense. To um fix up their land, that they'll plant these first and then grow out from there yep. because it restores a lot of the soil. It's just terrible, you know. Yep, absolutely. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So they're just a native seed. Might, uh, have, yeah, might have to get some off here. <laughs> uh, this is Gundabluey or flower wattles. Yep. Uh, yeah, much the same thing. They're edible seed and whatever. They grow more down, uh, yeah, southern New South Wales, Victoria, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, covered in spines, like so many other natives. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they could be ground up for making flour and whatever else, or yeah, just so eat the seeds. I feel like we should let our international audience know that everything in Australia will try to kill you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prep some of it, right? I've got a couple of species like that. Um, these are all uh, pig face, yeah, so teach different species of pig face. Yep. I see a lot of this around where I live. On yeah, the yeah, beans, yeah, eh? yeah, 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 yeah. They're a beach species, so um, you'll see them everywhere on the back of beaches, whatever. Yep. Um, a lot of people don't know you can eat them, um, and different bits of them. So the leaves, you can either eat raw, although a lot of people prefer to sort of cook them up yep. um, to get all the... Actually, they're also a really good uh, substitute for aloe vera. So if you've got sunburns and stuff like that. Oh, really? That I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But that's yeah. Good, good to know because yeah, I quite yeah, often yeah. burn myself. Yeah, yeah. If you ever get sunburnt and this stuff's around. I just... also cut myself often skateboarding. <laughs> so that's probably good for as if it's antibacterial yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I've heard some people say it's even better than aloe vera for it, but, um, yep. yeah, so different species, they're kind yep. of a bit of a, um, well, it grows like wildfire where I live, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, you'll see these red, uh, this one here, 
There are species of bush tomato, oh, yes. um, kangaroo apples, but there's okay. one I do have to give people warnings that uh, you do have to wait until they're quite ripe before eating them because they are toxic up until that point. Before they are um, ripe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. You'll see them out in the bush uh, down here. This is a Victorian species. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a bit yep. of a word of warning. But they do grow prolific. They'll root down the pot quickly, hey? Yeah, oh, they've got huge root systems, real deep root systems. You'll actually find they run out rhizomes and will pop up, you know, kind of yep. a metre or two away sometimes of extra shoots and stuff. Really depends. But, yep. Um, yeah, a bit nutty. Cool. Uh, there's some Dianella growing. Uh, the bigger ones are just here in the actual ground that I've been growing. Yeah, they um, love the ground, get them roots to yeah, spread they out, eh? Yeah, they've got huge roots as well. Yep. Um, and they've got these big flower spikes that pop out all these little purple berries and you stuff. You can't beat a root. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is some pretty recent sort of stock that got potted up. Um, get down low with it. Yeah, these ones are... Um, so, Illawarra plum pines. They grow, yeah, of course, through New South Wales. Up into Queensland, there's a fair few species of plum pine. I've got a bigger one out the front in the garden as well, but um, yeah, so they're one of those weird Australian fruits which has got segmented parts to it. Um, so usually the actual seed of the fruit uh, is the bit growing on the end, which is like the sort of circular ball or whatever. Um, and then the fruit behind it, the actual bit behind that you eat, is um, an enlarged stem rather than an actual traditional fruit. So um you get it the same with like cherry ballarts and whatever which have got the segmented fruit i think we found some up around mount macedon a while ago but um and you tin the name especially of the cherry ballarts of uh, exocarpus so ex external seed sort of thing yeah um but yeah so you this the fruit itself these big purple sort of bits they probably grow about that big and kind of fat um and yeah really nice really like almost like jello shops but really sweet but like an actual piney taste to them so they actually are a, yeah, yeah a bit of piney yeah yeah, yeah yeah um because they are a conifer species so quite um yeah Try take take a while to grow they're also didacious so i would a dioecious, so you need males and females um it's much the same as like tasmanian pepperberries and stuff like that um don't get Always remember if you're going to buy something like that from Bunnings, check that because a lot of the time they'll get rid of a lot of their excess stock that'll all be the males and they sell the females on to either to like specialist nurseries or to farm, yeah, actual uh, production farmers. So yep. sometimes you've got to go for a bit of a mission to find a female. Mm, there's uh, a hot tip for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, these are some cuttings. Of get some, down low. Yeah, these are some cuttings I've put in recently of some ruby salt bush. Um, many salt bush species and you'll see they've got these little red berries with a bit of a suck and spit so yeah i see this out in the wild quite a bit yeah yeah they're quite bushy mm -hmm. um and i'll never game to eat berries in the wild except yeah, 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 yeah. i eat blackberries like because i'm sure of them but that's about it that's something i'm always like quite staunch about is not eating stuff that um, I don't know the species all kind of absolutely and I, as part of my channel that's one thing that I really want to stress is mm. don't eat anything you don't know what it is mushrooms berries whatever it is if you don't mm. know what it is don't consume it simple yeah, it's pretty 100%. simple yeah I see me high and yeah. yeah kind of happy to do this just to let people know this is a bin for quandongs yeah a bit of an odd species um, they're a parasite species oh, there's one just pop it out its shell there and kind of see. Yep. Um, yeah, they're a parasite species, so they actually need, um, yeah, a host plant, and much like the cherry ballarts as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, they're native peach, so they got these big fruit on them, which got a big nut. You can also eat the nut on the inside, but they're real hard to crack open. Beautiful. Now you've got a few other parasitics, don't you? I've garden? got some of those growing in my garden. Let's yeah, go have a look. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This is a Warrigal Greens, so native spinach. Um, you might have seen this round a bit, but yeah, it's got that real spade shape sort of leaf. 
Um, they need a bit of a broil before you eat them. Normally you can eat small amounts of them raw, but I'd recommend giving them yeah, just a bit of a boil through real quick. Doesn't need much, but um, yeah, they've got a kind of toxin that's on the surface that needs to be kind of brought off. But yeah, real nice. Um, they grow everywhere, another beach species. Yep. Um, but yeah, if you have a look over here, this is I'm kind of excited. I'm actually getting my first fruit for the on this tree. Uh, they've just sort of started to swell up behind the main set of flower. These little white flowers on them. Um, yeah, and eventually they'll kind of get, um, yeah, kind of this bigish. Um, oh, look at this so one. This is yeah, this is a big kangaroo apple. Um, yep. It's quite. You can see it's still got a bit of fruit on it. Um, and this is kind of the colour. This particular species, though, um, which is yeah, Solanum aviculare. Oh no, sorry, um, Lessidiatum. They will, when they're ripe, will go this kind of orange, deep orange colour. There's another species down here which don't have the kind of blown out sort of fragments of leaves. They've got very straight yep. leaves. Are these the old fruits that are rotted? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want to eat those. Also with these, you want to try and get as much of the seed out as possible if you're going to eat it. Yeah, is it? Um, ah, they're very bitter. Yep. Um, but they'll grow. It's not for... arsenic in the seed, you know? No, it's got a type of steroid in it. Oh, right. Um, yeah, naturally occurring steroid, which the... Funnily enough, there's a industry in Russia of importing um, kangaroo apples to make steroids. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bodybuilding your boyfriend. Well, YouTube yeah. audience, you had it here first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Get be careful it. with those because to eat them unripe, they were actually traditionally used as a form of birth control. Yeah, but, okay. Uh, I've heard, I have heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm very like, be careful with those and eating them. Yep. Um, take a lot of prep work. I don't even fry them up a bit, you know. This is a, a plum pine we were talking about before, a larger one. So, a couple of years old, this one. Um, but they, yeah, they do get quite sort of large, can get up to 20 meters and whatever eventually. Yep. It takes decades to get there though. Sure. Um, these are also some Dianella and whatever else. You can see the thing stalks, they've st stopped fruiting for the year, so you usually got to chop these back. They get these little purple berries on them, they're really sweet and nutty. Yep. Um, here's a, I've actually got two species of Dianella growing in here. This is a, probably one of the nicer ones. Um, you have Mark Five or deeper purple with berries on them. Yep. Sweeter? Yeah, quite a bit. Yep. Uh, a bit more juicy too. Yep. This is a quinog tree, so it's hosting off the plum pine. Yep. Um, yeah, see the stalks are quite um, close to each other. They need to be. So there's the tour of Urban Native Edible Farm with Liam Ward. If you need anything, hit him up. Yeah, um, urban.native.edibles on Instagram um, or the same at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and I can send out a price list or whatever else. I think the absolute most I charge for anything is 35 for some of the more more harder to get and harder to grow stuff um, from the tropics. But yeah, for the most part, I think average prices anywhere between five to 20 bucks for anything so perfect uh, some things i will do deals on um three for 30 uh, especially the lily pillies i'm trying to clear them out at the moment but um also things like uh warrigal greens and whatever i do the fourth ten and whatever uh, i do only charge about three bucks for them so usually pretty prolific to grow so um yeah Awesome, man. Hey, yeah, so thanks very much for the tour. No problem. <laughs> and uh, keep it stiff, and we'll catch you on the next one. Hit up Liam. <laughs>